Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This week we're going to look at everything that makes the lion absolutely epic whilst we paint his model. Let's crack on. So as mentioned in this video, we're going to be painting the lion, specifically the 40k version. You've seen me paint many things before, this guy is going to be black. If you want to know exactly how I'm painting him, there's a Raven Guard painting video in the top right. I can add a few bits afterwards if you'd like to know how I painted the cloak and the like, but really this is about the lion himself and the lore around him. Fact number one, the lion is essentially a medieval knight in power armor. Flung by the warp to the feudal planet of Caliban, he was found by Sir Luther, one of the Knights of the Order. An order of warriors who were trained in fighting giant beasts and had the ability to use imperial style power armor that they could manufacture on Caliban whilst using firearms and bladed weapons. The lion, whilst having arrived on Caliban as just a baby, like all Primarchs did, started to grow very quickly, and within a short space of time, he was a fully grown man, larger than anyone else on the planet. With his speed, strength, and intellect honed by Sir Luther, he became the foremost monster hunter on the planet. How much cooler can you get than a medieval knight with access to space age technology hunting giant beasts? Fact number two, he's essentially assassin proof. Whilst during the Great Crusade, during the compliance of a planet called Sorosi, multiple assassination attempts were made on the lion. One of these was a demonic incursion that was thwarted by the combined arms attempts of the Dark Angels and the Imperials on the planet, and the other one, arguably far more awesome, was they attempted to assassinate the lion with an atomic warhead, but failed. Now I don't know specifically how they failed, but the fact that someone tried to assassinate a single person with an atomic warhead, even a Primarch, is pretty awesome. And the fact that the lion survived is even better. Fact number three, a little bit of sibling rivalry meant that tens of thousands of space marines, whenever they meet, have to have a little bit of a fight. Specifically, Layman Russ and the lion don't have a particularly good history. To make a long story short, a planetary governor insulted Layman Russ and told him that he was the emperor's lapdog. Incensed, he asked the Emperor if he could immediately attack the planet and was denied. The Emperor sent the Dark Angels instead. It's almost like he's trying to pit his children against each other. Either way, the Dark Angels landed and made the planet compliant within record time, with Lionel Johnson personally beheading the planetary governor who had so insulted his brother. Layman Russ being Layman Russ wasn't particularly pleased about this and stormed in and started fighting the lion. There's probably a bit more to it than that, but that's the Cliff Notes version. They fought for over a day until Russ started laughing, saying, ah, oh, this isn't so bad, this is funny how this started. The lion isn't a particularly humorous guy and knocked him out. I think the main thing here is don't make jokes in front of the lion and definitely don't fight him. In the end, when Russ woke up, he realized his honor had been besmirched, and from that point onwards, whenever the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves meet, they have to have an honor duel in remembrance of this event. Strangely enough, for the most part, these honor jewels actually strengthen the bonds between the two legions. So whilst the two brothers don't get along that well, the legions, they're doing okay. It is worth stressing that I said for the most part, there are a few of these jewels that can turn nasty and even lead to deaths. So it's all based on the individuals conducting these honor jewels. However, it all leads back to the lion and Russ having a bit of a fight because one of them killed the other one's toy or something. Fact number four, he survived having his throat slashed by Comrade Kurz. Not only did he survive having his throat slashed, he also stuck a sword straight through him. Yes, the Primarch who could see the future was still slightly too slow for the lion. During the heresy, Kurz tried to get the lion to see Horus' side of things and that really, the lion should join them. After all, they're the Dark Angels, why not join the dark side of the galaxy? Horus? Never mind. As evidenced by the wounds at the start of this fact, that clearly didn't go to plan for Kurz, or maybe that's what he'd seen to begin with. However, what he definitely didn't expect was that while slashing the lion's throat, he'd have a sword run through him. So the lion's pretty quick, quick enough to catch Kurz. Fact number five, and it's yet another duel, Kairos Fate Weaver, the big chicken-headed lizard bird thing that Zinch loves to send out against all us poor mortals. 
When the Lion and Kairos came face to face, Kairos, using all his wibbly dibbly zinch magic, tried to get the Lion to turn, looking deep into the Lion's soul and psyche to find something to sway him, and found nothing. He was absolutely unshakable and untaintable. So despite all his secrecy, despite everything he would come to later do against his own forces, the Lion was loyal to the Emperor from the beginning to the end. And just for good measure, he also impaled the giant chicken demon and sent him back into the warp. Womp womp. Fact number six, he created the ultimate boys club in the form of Imperium Secundus. Arriving in Ultramar in the mid period of the Horus Heresy, he links up with his bros, Gilliman and Sanguinius and created the Imperium Secundus. This was a scheme devised by Gilliman to place Sanguinius as War Master of the Imperium given the fact there was a giant ruin storm across the center of the galaxy splitting the Imperium in two, and they had no way of knowing if the other half was even still there. The lion showing unexpected humility knelt before Sanguinius and proclaimed him War Master, understanding the brightest child of the Emperor was the best choice. Ultimately, without the lion's support, the first son of the First Legion, Imperium Secundus would never even been close to a success. As it was, events would transpire that Imperium Secundus ended up not being required and everyone rushed towards Terra. However, it's worth noting both the respect and honour that Gilliman and Sanguinius, two of the greatest sons of the Emperor, saw in the Lion. With Gilliman going as far to think of the Lion as an older brother, despite them being technically the same age, just given to the sheer wisdom and presence that the Lion had around him. Fact number seven, he leveled his own planet in a titanic duel with his former mentor. After the events of the Horus Heresy, after the cleansing of Terra, when the Lion had arrived too late to make an impact on the outcome of the battle, he went home to Caliban in grief. Arriving in orbit around his planet, he was met by orbital batteries opening up on his ships. It appeared that Luther, his mentor, father, brother, friend, whatever name you want to attach to him, had fallen to chaos and turned on both the Lion and the Emperor. With grim resolve, the Lion ordered an orbital bombardment of Caliban and then made planetfall with his forces shortly afterwards in order to engage the traitor in a duel. Meeting Luther in the heart of the Dark Angel's fortress monastery, they struck, each blow leveling colonnades, pillars, columns, and taking up the support structure of the entire monastery, which itself was miles wide. The best way to imagine this is think of the biggest anime fight you could think of with people getting chucked through stuff and things falling down and that, it's, it's that. Whilst this duel took place and Planetfall was commencing, the bombardment continued of key traitor infrastructure, to such a degree that, unknown to all, the planet began to break apart. As the planet crumbled, the tectonic plates shifted and lava rose from the molten core to scorch the earth, the Lion and Luther continued to fight. The Lion being a Primarch was evenly matched against Luther who had been infused with warp powers to bring him to a knight on equal strength. Between gouts of flame, earthquakes and the shaking of tectonic shift, Luther saw a gap in the Lion's armour and unleashed a psychic attack. The Lion, mortally wounded, fell to his knees and Luther, raising the final blow to strike him, suddenly realised what he had done. The cloud of chaos fell from his vision and he realised that his friend was dying and his home planet was burning. The chaos gods, realising they had lost their champion and had been thwarted, sent a warp storm to completely obliterate the planet. Only one place survived, an area covered with a void shield powerful enough to stop the warp storms. This area, once the planet was destroyed, was little more than an asteroid and became the rock. There is more that happened after this, such as the lion going into stasis, which is important for the next fact, but I'm not going to go into it here. Needless to say, this fact was about a big old jewel that ended up with a planet exploding. Pretty 40k. Fact number eight, he's basically 40k's version of the Green Knight, and personally, I bloody love it. For those who don't know, the Green Knight is a character from Bretonnia in Warhammer Fantasy Battle or Warhammer The Old World, and he appears when the defenders of Bretonnia most need him, arriving from forest terrain on the battlefield and running forward to engage the enemy with massive haymaker blows of his sword. 
that's essentially what the lion's been doing in the 41st millennium. Before he was revealed to the wider Imperium, he would appear as the cowled giant or the unforgiving knight, heralded by an apparition of ancient forests fading from the ether. How he does this is known only to himself, but it's pretty incredible and I kind of love that big forests appear and then the lion walks out with his watchers in the dark to carry the day. Those have been eight of the coolest facts that I could find about Lionel Johnson and really it's made the character grow on me in a big way. I really hope you enjoyed this video, I've done similar ones for both Pedro Cantor and Marnius Calgar and there will definitely be more in the future so let me know what you think and please put your cool facts in the comments below because I love the lore all around the lion. I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint the model in the background as I've told these little facts and stories, I've definitely enjoyed it. As always I've been Sam. I'll see you next time.